mm -hmm. down to ground. Yeah, I I have some different examples. Yeah, they're just not out. Those are those are tough. Bob, what's the significance of the wagon full of glass here? Or a surplus. <laughs> oh my goodness. I need to fig figure out another way to display some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what happens when you've got more, yeah. more stuff than you have room for yep. stuff. And then the box of Star Wars is taking over the room. Well, my son and I was going through, I collect, see I collect toys too. Oh boy. And uh, I'm into Star Wars and everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, these were in the attic part. The, see the door over here? It's, it's uh, the unfinished attic. And it's all full of stuff. Oh that my we goodness. drug this box out. He was wanting a particular item to take home, so that's right. why it's setting out. I used to have a nice round oak table right in the center. Uh -huh. And this uh, centerpiece here was in the middle of it. Okay. Well, my wife thought the table needed to be downstairs. <laughs> I lost my so, table. Oh, it was too nice. <laughs> yeah. We positioned it right away from Yeah. There. So I lost my table. I haven't replaced it. So That's very cool. This is it's uh, just, you know, I, I've had a theory for quite some time and I have yet to have it proven wrong. I mean, the more and more places that we travel and go, nobody collects a particular subject. Yeah. Everybody, if you're a collector, you. I call them cross uh -huh. here. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've got some of this, but you've also got a little bit of that over yeah. there, too. Yeah. Oh, I've got, I'll tune me. I collect Coca Cola stuff and. Um, yeah. Fruit jars, bottles. I collect eye wash cups. Yeah, yeah. And Those are neat. Those are really cool. Yeah. I've and, got a few around. <laughs> and when people see what I have and how they're displayed, like this kind of thing in in window, uh -huh. it's like, whoa, <laughs> how can they have made that yeah, many? Exactly. Like this. How can they, why? Yeah, what's the deal with well, so many that, different pieces? There are so many companies out there, and everybody thought they had to have their own design, their own patent. Right, right. And uh, that, right. that was the deal. I mean, the, I, of course, they all advertise the better mousetrap type, sure, type sure. deal. That's sure. like the tips, um, uh -huh. which I love. I really enjoy the tips, the different designs. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. They all advertise they were a better way to attract the lightning and take it down and all this. Exactly. And, and some of the tips can get outrageous. Well, I'm uh, noticing like these spiky things uh -huh, here. Yep. Yeah. This one here right behind you is like one of the rarest tips I have. Oh, that. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. It's actually uh, Mark Mitchell, St. Louis, Missouri on it. And there's only like three or four of those that are really? in good shape. That you yeah. know about. Well, all of these. That, that, uh -huh. and this. Yep, that's a neat one. That little looks like the devil's. Fork. <laughs> yeah, and then, there, then they made this one here, which is really rare. Four arms. Four. Yeah. My goodness. That, that's a $1,500 tip all, all day long. Yeah, and there's different styles of them. That one has a different yeah. face. Yeah. yeah, There's a little bitty one there. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. How about the time you say, oh, I have that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was telling Mike yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was going through them. Trying to clean some stuff out and put it over where I could, you know, it's it's either a duplicate or mm -hmm. yeah. And I had some little just porcelain spools. Uh huh. Uh, I've got these. I got four or five of them. Uh huh. And for some reason, I turned them over. And hadn't paid any attention before. And uh, there's a company in St. Louis, turn of the century, called St. Louis Malleable, and they made mm -hmm. iron okay. stuff. Okay. All kinds for for uh, electrical uh -huh. distribution, and so they have spools made for some of their spool racks, sure. yeah. and it embossed. One is St. Louis, mm -hmm. and the other, another one. I turned it over, and it said STL malleable, uh -huh. <laughs> and I turned the next one over, and here's this little tiny stamp. This just their logo, which was yeah. STL. Yeah. You know, I said, well, I can't throw that out. I know. It's yeah. a different embossing. <laughs> I know. You know? But I know. I uh, It's totally different. Bob, what was the significance of the white baked enamel sign in this case that says something about St. Louis? Which one are you? On the third shelf up in the case, there is a baked enamel sign that says something about St. Louis on lightning rod. What is the significance uh, oh, of that white sign? Yes. It's just an advertising. Little, just St. Louis mm -hmm. lightning rod company. 
The what? St. Louis Lightning oh. Rod Company. I Lightning, think St. Louis Lightning or Rod Na Company. Or Na National, I'm sorry. National Lightning Rod Company, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Interesting. Yeah, it's just an advertising. And, and tell me again about this uh, side mount uh, rod you have here. Uh, well, it's just a chimney brace. Okay, chimney brace. Uh -huh. There you go. Yep. And what was the name that you gave to this neat kind of vein right here? You said this shape. The, the yeah. kite, kite tail. Kite tail. Uh -huh. That's cool. Yep. Very cool. Now, did the chimney braces typically have a number of ornaments stacked on them like that? Or no, they? no, they'd just be a ball. Or this is just being used for exhibit, yep. and it's a little bit embellished over the original. Yep. <laughs> but as far as these beautiful pendant style are concerned, these are original, or uh -huh, everything pretty yeah. much done the way they're they they're done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. So I'm kind of going around the room in the top half, and then I'm going to go back around the room in the bottom half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just too much to take in at once. <laughs> Absolutely breathtaking. Thank you for the opportunity to come visit. So these, uh, whatever you call them, the tail. The weather vane. Okay. The weather vane. The glass tail. Weather vane. It appears that those could be customized. You'd get be able to put your name on it or no actually the ones you see with names in that's the company oh that's the company yeah. name okay. got servers out of st louis i see okay all yeah. right yeah that's kind of a folklore that people uh yeah well think about you would think there would be a point where they would say you know what yeah a special order uh, we'll, yeah they'll put your name on it and, but as far as i know that was really never done so no. those all of those are company uh, type company type. names mm -hmm. yeah Yep. So, uh, tell me about this uh, cone, this uh, double cone shape you have lined up on on this uh, this couple of topper These here. Guys? Yes. Well, there there's two names. They call them pee wees, obviously because of the size. Okay. And then horizontal rib. Horizontal rib. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please. And uh, how do those figure in the big picture of stuff? Well, they were used on copper tube type, little short, smaller rods usually. Mm -hmm. It was and just that, a different company. And that uh, that base is that would be is that like that's that's off of a big ventilator. Oh, oh big, yeah, big like, that's just the top piece of it. Okay, like we drive along and you see the big barns and, mm -hmm. and there's a cupola. This well, well some some have cupolas. You know, they're more square. And yeah. Got ventil then there's the metal, all metal ventilators. Oh, okay. And that's a piece off of metal type. And I see. Just to display. Now, what would be some uh, what would be some um, balls that had or uh, were in your mind honorable mention against this wall, Bob? Well, you just passed the uh, these two. These are kingpins. Yeah, the orange. Orange. And yeah, I ball. gathered from the group that you showed me and offered for sale that orange was a really desirable. Or orange color. is tough. Yeah. It's, it's, in any it's case, rare. no matter what, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, you think about it, you know, it's kind of common sense, uh, especially people back when they didn't want something godish and Halloweeny kind of okay. on top of their uh -huh. roof. So they made them, but they didn't make very many because sure. they didn't sell well. And uh, this onion shape is unique. Uh huh. Is that called an onion? Um, yes, that's it. You're exactly right. I'll be darned. How about that? And that must be a little bit rare because in the big picture in the room, I don't see very many of them. Well, oddly enough, they didn't make a whole lot of colors of oh, the onion. Okay. Basically, white, blue milk glass, and yeah, then, see a few and then over there. cobalt. Those. Well, they're different. Yeah, those are different. Those are JFGs. Okay. They're a similar shape, but they're different. Different. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the cobalt one in the onion is really scarce. It's, it's <clears throat> rare. I said I'd stay in the upper half of the wall, so that's what I got to do. <laughs> you you got to take a picture of the fish. Uh huh. Right. Okay, we'll get that. that. That's my rarest. Uh, really, weather vane? Is that what that's called? Well, yeah. No, it, I found that in a true antique shop. Uh oh. Back about well, it was last year. Which Lou and I have discovered is quite rare anymore. May yeah. I handle it? Yeah. Okay. Is it going to oh, turn? You can move it. Yeah. I I. It's called a northern pike. Is uh huh. What it's called, and um, I walked in this. True antique. I mean, I, when I say true, they had showcases and everything was old. It was it was and high priced. Uh -huh. That's why they had stuff because it was still yeah. there. It was high priced. And generally, yeah. I can't buy anything out of those type places. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, they had any of my balls or weather vanes?" And this guy goes, uh, "No, no, don't have anything, which is normal." 
But then he, he goes, well, we got this thing. He points way up high. And it was hanging on a copper wire from the rafters. Oh, my goodness. And he, he said, we got this. We don't know much about it. And it was painted black with gold oh, highlight. Yeah, somebody and somebody had done that, like, I'm guessing, in the 70s. Yeah. Because it was old paint, but not real old. Right. And, but I could see gold leaf poking through some of the chips and stuff like that. Okay. Anyway, when I, I was pecking on it for holes or damage or anything. And, and uh, I then I knew what it was immediately. And I said, can I see that? And he took it down with some effort. And, yeah. Sure. So then it was a matter of the price. Well, I got it for $475. Wow. And to be quite honest, I, I, the highest offer so far, somebody feels tried to buy it, not that it's going to leave. It's been twenty four thousand. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Mercy. there's only it's only the fourth one that's been found. No kidding. Yeah. Now, all of those are those uh, manufacture offerings. The the veins. The uh -huh. vein, Oh yeah. The, uh -huh. the, yep. The cow or the. Mm -hmm. So you would go through a catalog and say, "Oh, I want mm -hmm. a rooster on mine." Yep. And, yep. You know something. And happened. and if what you'll notice, or maybe haven't yet, but like the fronts. The cast fronts mm -hmm. are different. Um, you know, they're all all different. Well, every company kind of had their own design yeah. of their front. Yeah. Whereas the animal might have been used by ten or twelve companies. I see. But there was metal stamping places that did the animals, and they sold them to different companies. Oh, I see. But every company kind of had their own unique design yeah. for their own front. Yeah. So. Uh, so this would be like a a, a vendor, a subcontractor. Uh, Bob, what's the significance of this color? I only see this color in one place in the entire room. Uh, is that teal? It's kind of a greenish teal. Hmm. On the edge of teal. That's neat. Yeah. And then the quilts came in a wide array of colors. Quilt. Mm -hmm. The black quilt pattern. Black quilt. Yeah. I see. And then on this top row here, do these count as peewees? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the amber peewee seems to stand out among them. Well, the red is the rarest. I see. Is this painted? Does that why I see a variation in uh, color no. density? No, just it's, it's just thinner, shadow. thinner glass. I'll be darned. And it's got thicker on the end. So wow. And then what? Do you, what's the name of this design? That's the chestnut. Chestnut. Okay. Very cool. And and this is a typical repair on a piece that's otherwise incredibly rare. What's that? This uh, line, or am I looking that's, at a streak? That's slag, slag glass. Ah, yeah. it's slag. Yep. Very cool. So yep. we're not looking at a glue line there. No, that's an no, actual no. olive streak or an amber streak. Yep. Very neat. Yeah, Very know. neat. Look at that. Oh, it's look at that. Go ahead. I'll hold the camera. That, that's cool. It looks like a double twist. <laughs> Have you ever seen um, an artisan making a lightning rod ball in period equipment? I have. Yes. And what's the process look like? How does that work? He got it. They heat the mold up with a blowtorch. Okay. Today, anyway. Right. And then they uh, get a glob of glass on their blow tube, and then they uh, stick it in and clamp the Clamp the mold together, and he blows it just like a. Now, how does the, how do they make the ball hollow? It's well, being it, blown. It's blown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and how is it that the there is a bottom, um, you know, like what we would call a burst top inkwell? How is it that the bottom um, has a, a lip on it just like the top? How does the, he get the, the pressure? Is the, there actually a hymen over it or something before the? It just does it by his uh, his the way. Technique, the way they do it. Yeah. This one I actually saw blown. I mean, it's a modern ball. Yeah. It's it's a couple years old, but uh, I actually saw that one made. Yeah. At some point, is is the hole covered? In other words, when the when the ball's being blown in the mold, how does he get the air pressure to build up inside it if both ends have an opening? Uh, now that I don't know. I, do, I didn't, You know what I mean? How I didn't notice that enough to be able to tell you that. I'm, I'm wondering if there isn't a knockout that he has to hit after the ball has been made to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, when they took it out of the mold, I, it was open on both ends, and they had, of course, they chip off the collars. Yeah. To, I'll be darned. Anyway. <laughs> How the heck did he? Oh, I'm wondering. Anyway. Now I should watch another one again. Yeah. Leave it to the computer geek to ask the question, <laughs> right? Is this vein of the horse, is that, is that more of a homemade? No, it's really early. Um, okay. It, the very out. first veins they made were silhouette. Flat. Okay. Yeah. We've and gone around the top half of the room. Now we're going to go around the bottom half of the room. And um, that's just the way they made them. And they, they didn't last very well because these solder marks, oh. they broke away. And, and they just didn't. 
they didn't perform well. So it's really hard to find these in good shape hmm. in this type of arrow. I'm going to have to hold my phone down near the floor to get the <laughs> get the angle. The, the pendants are just non-stop, Bob. I, I love them. They're pendants. absolutely gorgeous. I, I love them, and they're all rare. I mean, in the original terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like saying you buy new ones. Yeah. My goodness, these colors are absolutely breathtaking. There, there's nothing like it. There's no other hobby in glass, in my opinion, that has the color and design yeah. that these do. Well, given the translucent and opaque variations mm -hmm. and the brightness of the colors, not unlike the ones I'm looking at right here, um, was this in the group that you offered me? Um, or one very, very similar to I, it? I think so, yeah. Spectacular. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, even insulators can't... Can't, bottles and fruit jars. Yeah, I mean, there's gorgeous stuff. Can't get there with the opacity of the, uh -huh. these these uh, milk glass ones are just drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, there's. I mean, I got a lot of collections of different glass, but there's mm. just nothing like the lightning rod stuff, in my opinion. Now, within the pendant uh, category itself, I noticed that some are what we would call slick in the bottle business, or some are, are actually um, uh, have a pattern to them. Is it a, a similar, like a smooth or an acorn, or what do you call the different pendant patterns? Well, there is like an acorn. You've probably seen that. There's like, uh, I think you're looking at now, there's a, just call a paneled. I think it's got six panels. So this, this SCA here is a panel? Yes, uh-huh. Right? And then there's a ribbon paneled, which on... This guy here is an that, acorn? That blue milk glass. What's this guy That's called? Rib, ribbed and paneled. Ribbed and paneled, mm -hmm. okay. And then you called that a quilt? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a flat quilt. Okay. Now say the first word again. Flat. Flat quilt. Yeah. Is there a different kind of quilt other than it, a flat quilt? Not, not in pendants. In balls, there's raised quilt and flat quilt. Oh, raised quilt right, and right, flat right quilt. Right by your head there. That's raised quilt. Raised quilt. Ah, I and then see. Right next to them on the other shelf is uh, flat quilt. Ah, so this is a raised quilt. Mm -hmm. The each each diamond is is a it's, little it's, bit it's kind of roundy. Yeah, and then this is a flat quilt. The blue one. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Now, what do you call these? That's a Hawkeye. One more. A Hawkeye. Uh -huh. Like they're, the Hawkeye state. Mm -hmm. They're they're uh, embossed Hawkeye. On the bottom part. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is it visible if you, somewhere? If you shoot up, you'll see it. Look in the SCA when you see it real well. Okay. Shoot oh. Up. Oh yeah. See in the bottom there. Yeah. Let me get an angle here on it. There you go. <clears throat> oh yeah. I see that. We're reading it backwards, but there it is. <laughs> wow. H A W K E Y E. And it was the Hawkeye Lightning Rod Company. So I'll be darned. Just put their name on it. So, having to have to discuss the unfortunate issue of um, reproductions, I was wondering uh, where the major reproductions are coming from, and if you had to give people an advisory on how to protect themselves, what would your words of wisdom include for that? That's a tough. Tough subject. <laughs> right? It um, is for any collecting hobby in, now, but... In, in the current scheme of things, the, the Moonstar ball and the rib grape pattern is being pumped, and I think they're coming out of China. And the, the Moon and Star ball mm -hmm. and the ribbed... Rib grape. Grape. Show yeah. me examples of the real ones. Right, right behind you. Okay, the Moon and Star ball and the ribbed grape. Right in front of you there. Moon and star ball. All right. Let me get out of the, my own light here and show you guys what he's talking about. So these have been reproduced. They are, they are currently, there's a, there's a gaudish, ugly red, kind of orangey red, and there's cobalt. Okay. So the and moon is on, where's the moon in this pattern? I only see stars. Oh, right there. Oh, oh, the moon is Cres like a smile under the star. Crescent I see. Moon, yeah. Okay, so crescent moon and star. This is the this is a, a burgundy-ish uh, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, in my camera, I'm noticing that there's less black in here. The, this is a beautiful ruby sort of burgundy or or um, cabernet color. Yeah. So these, and then what is the other style that's being the ribbed grape? The ribbed grape. 
Okay, oh, I see. Mm, beautiful. And most of those that we're just talking about are, are really heavy, thick glass. Okay. And the collars are really heavy, thick. And I see. And they're ground down. You'll Super ground overdone down. instead of being sort of a petite or diminutive, mm -hmm. very thin. Let me see if I can get some close up on here. I don't know how the camera's going to focus. Oh, there we go. Got a little focus. So this, this is a very lightweight, sort of thin, thin, edgy glass. And it looks like what we would call from the burst top inkwell. Again, I refer to that. Um, in, in the rib grape, they make a cobalt blue. There was never original cobalt there blue. There was never a cobalt blue now, rib there grape. there is a red, but it's going to be this dark burgundy. And, and this is intense ruby, huh? Or yeah, purplish yes. ruby. Yes. Yeah, so and, this and is the, real. And the new ones are uh, mm. kind of a orangey red. They're not even red. They're more orange. I see. Now, when you say orange, is there a color up here that's well, sort of... Well, kind of like the ball around the corner, the orangey okay. red. Okay. Like that. What shape is are these? Those are doorknobs. Doorknob shape. Uh -huh. I see. Are there? Is there more than one kind, like a smooth doorknob or a panel doorknob? No, just, or are they all the same? Just the doorknob. Wow, and you've just got them slagged out here to the max. <laughs> well, they're all different. Well, that's right. <laughs> and so it's whatever happens to... These remind me of the McLaughlin commemorative insulators here. Spectacular. This one is bomb. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's neat. The butterscotch in this is to yeah. die for. Holy moly. What a beautiful color. Look at that yellow. So, mm. not being a, a somewhere lower than novice in, <laughs> in terms of knowing about this stuff. He has an amazing amount of stuff just laying around What's in the, the room. the purpose of the arrow? Uh, well... I mean, originally the whole design was to turn with the wind, okay. you know, show the wind direction. Okay. You know, now whether that worked well or not, yeah, I can't really tell you that. Yeah. But because uh, they, over time, they would get worn as it spun around, spun around. Sure. They would, you'll see them tipping like that because they're worn out. Literally wore, wore yeah. that the connection off. Yep. And I've, I've, I've seen pictures where you get the north. Southeast, mm -hmm. west. Mm -hmm. So you got four, mm -hmm. right, for the directions and right. all of that. So yeah, there's all kinds of different ones of those. So yeah, different designs. Uh, this one I just got recently. It's quite rare. It's extremely early. They're called swinging directionals. My goodness. And uh, of course, you got you know they all hook in. Oh, goodness. North, south, east, west. Compass mm -hmm. points. Yeah. Oh. But they're extreme. This one is... It's the only one I've ever had a chance to get. So... <laughs> like, I can't even tell you who made it at this point. Mm -hmm. So... Mm. And and the metal there, is it tin? Is it steel? It's tin. Iron, whatever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And tin. Tin. Uh, oh, good. Wow. Wow. What well, is this? Well, there's different types. You know, there's a brass. Uh, uh, and that, and that one will fold out into four points, mm -hmm. pivoting yeah. again on the. Uh, what did you call that? Uh, oh, look at that. Interesting. Can you just slightly turn it so we can see the letters? There you go. Look at that. Wow. And and take that apart slowly for me so they can see how it comes apart. Look at that. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And you called that center pivot the ferrule. Uh huh. Ferrule. Uh huh. Okay. What is the, is this just a swirl, a ribbed swirl? <laughs> it's just a swirl. It reminds me of the Zanesville. And then what is your term for the slick or the plain? Just plain round. But plain round. But there's different types, like this okay. one here has threaded collars. Okay. Some are not threaded, like the ones you got from me. Most of them are just... Uh, and this is opaque. This is how we talk about that, the, the that, fact that it's not translucent. That's an extremely rare color. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's an opaque, plain round, threaded. Mm -hmm. I see. And then how would I refer to, for instance, this guy? What did we call this guy? That's a cone Electra. Okay, a cone Electra. It's embossed Electra. And it says Electra right around the belly of it. I'm having trouble getting the, getting the focus on it, but there are raised letters across there. And then what is this shape called? That's uh, back to the doorknob. Back to the doorknob. There you go. And then the acorn is down here in blue. That's an acorn pendant. Okay. Unlike... The paneled ribbed? Mm -hmm, the ribbed and paneled. Yeah, it's you could, paneled. Um, 
It seems to me a novice might easily confuse the acorn with the paneled ribbed. And then there's electric, electra, yeah, oh, with the quotes, look at that. A, actually, they're little lightning bolts. Really? Instead of, instead of quotes, they're little lightning bolts. Oh, the quotes are little lightning bolts. <laughs> wow, that's neat. I'm not even going to try to turn it. Ooh, how cool. Well, we're trying to go around the bottom of the room. What's the significance of this round guy down here? That's a stencil that a, comp a company had, and they, um, when they got their cable, their mm. spools of cable in, they would put that stencil on and spray it. Oh, my goodness. Just a little simple advertising. To yeah. And these guys, apparently, I see that they carried some kind of a, a, a steel mesh. Um, I notice on the, on the uh, chimney mounts, there was a, a steel mesh wire that they used. Oh, that was to, a, the ground rod, the ground cable. Right. And then they also used solid ground rod. Some, some did. And mm -hmm. Most of the time it was copper. Now, the ground rod came in pre-cut lengths, probably 8 feet or 12 feet. Well, the the cable, the, the actual wire cable came on a spool. A spool, just, of course. Just, just but, like this here. But when we talk about the, um, the, 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 the long the, distance... The, the twisted type rod came okay. in 10, 10 foot sections. And do you have the piece that would have been considered the union between the butt ends of two? Oh, somewhere. <laughs> I will task you to find that for me yeah, so we can, okay. so these guys can identify um, oddball stuff sitting on the shelf in the antique store if it is related to. I really don't know if no? I have any okay. available. Well, I, I don't mean to task you in an un. I mean, I got probably tons in the boxes. Elsewhere. Okay, but maybe not, not out? Yeah. And what's the significance of something like this? Well. <laughs> Made by the Miller Lightning Rod Company, St. Louis. Okay. And it was a, a field piece tool. And ah, what they did. An anvil ish? Well, sort of. Okay. I have to find the appropriate. All right. Uh, a lot of times they would need to cut the cable and put on one of these fittings like you're talking about. And they would stick it right in there and pound it. Oh, and then turn it, it and pound it and it crimped it on, yes. So it uh, crimp and an anvil. And then there was a hammer of some sort to use for that. Mm, I'm sure. And let me look in the groove with the piece. Oh, look at that. So it is exactly like an old mm -hmm. style crimping tool. Look yep. at that. Yep. That is amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Hard piece to find. Absolutely. Now, I notice in addition to um, paneled, let's see. Goodness gracious, I can't even remember all the names. This is a paneled what? That's ribbed and paneled. Ribbed and paneled. Pendant. Just plain. Plain ribbon, pendant. Ribbon panel. And then what about when we have this burst, this starburst thing going that's on? That's a Hawkeye. Oh, that's a it, Hawkeye. It'll be okay. Just like the balls, it says Hawkeye on it. I see. Oh, it says Hawkeye. Yep. Very cool. Okay. Now, very likely these are more modern production. I these, see. These when you say more modern, you say in 1920, 1990s. 1990s. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. reproductions. Yeah. And then what are we what are we looking at with these here? That's a Diddy Blitzen. Say one more time. Diddy Blitzen. D I D D Y. Uh -huh. So Diddy. Oh, D I D D I E. And then Blitzen. Blitzen. B L I T Z E N. In, in German, Blitzen uh, is the word for lightning. Oh, I thought he rode with Rudolph. Well, <laughs> no, they're for Blitzen. <laughs> so it was a German, uh, you know, Orient uh, or based uh, roots. When you said, like, those that are. Made like 1990, mm -hmm. which is pretty recent. Oh yes, uh -huh. but were they were they made for actual use? No, or were they no. Strictly somebody a got hold, somebody got hold of the molds and they okay. So it's it's, it. it's a reproduction yeah. Yeah. specifically Fan just fantasy type out there for the collector yeah. to uh, spend yep. their money on. Yep. And and like the cobalt particularly is very desirable today because. They only made so many of them, yeah. and guys, they, they're be they're beautiful, and they want them. Right. So they still bring some pretty good money on some of them. Absolutely amazing. I've got about uh, maybe five or ten more minutes of, of low wall work to do to get around to the stairwell and then into the stairwell itself, Bob. And uh, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to view this absolutely spectacular collection. <laughs> This is did you amazing. Get, did you get these guys? 
Well, I'll I'll wait I mean, for you to explain, and I'll I'll. This is a horse on a corn cob. Horse on air corn. Oh man, that's quite scarce. I okay. Mean, and then the next. Well, the standing mule. The standing really, mule. Really, really tough. And then the horse and rider. Wow, the standing mule. And in weather veins, condition is everything. Of course. You know, bullet holes just knock the value. Right. Or, or parts missing, you know, that type of thing. Mm. Oh, look, they even had, uh, oh, this guy may not be a Pony Express rider. He looks too, too relaxed. Yeah, I don't really know what he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a little too relaxed. Yeah. The Pony Express rider looked like he was riding a, a Kawasaki motorcycle while he was sitting up there on the horse. Very but, cool. Um, all of those forms would be something that you could look in a catalog and say, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the tail I yeah. want on the arrow. I've got old catalogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there are catalogs. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you could actually put together your system. Well, yeah. I mean, the salesman uh, knocking on doors or, you know, however they approached you, yeah. that's what, uh, they, that was a reference book to order from. I see. So I would imagine these, I'm, I'm going to call them the, the tail of the arrow. Mm -hmm. um, the figures. The figures. Uh -huh. um, a person could select and, and it would be probably something representational of uh, they were either in, in sheep ranching or exactly. they were cattle ranchers exactly. or yeah. horse farms. Yeah. or That's why you know, mules, uh, mules in the 1800s was quite... Yes. But by the time the 1900 to the 30s, mules had kind of got well with horse with the right. uh, Didn't need with it. cars. You right. know, it was a fading thing. So that's why mules are kind of scarce. Tell me about this twisted wire with the finger. I love this. Very rare. This is amazing. Called, I missed it on the first go round. It's called the pointing hand. The pointing hand. And that version with the twisted wire is the earliest version. Oh my. That there was. Goodness. There are other, uh, they made it after that time period. Oh. There's one over there with uh, solid wire. I'll be darned. And that's the way most of them are. Mm -hmm. The twisted wires are really hard to find. How cool is that? Explain to me uh, if there is a special name for this bracket that I see at the bottom of this point. There, it's a roof brace. Okay. Um, it's made to uh, bend to the shape of the roof. I and see. this particular one is Hawkeye. And this would be over the apex of the roof. Over the, yeah, over the and that's why the that's why the uh, let me get a close up of that while you're holding it. Is there a name right on it? Yeah, Hawkeye. Well, how about that? Let me get out of my own light yeah, and touch right my focus. Reach. Touch my focus again. There it is. Boom! Look at that, Hawkeye Lightning Rod Company. And then what does it say there? Grand Rapids, Indiana, or Grand Rapids yeah, something? I have look. I A. What is that? Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Iowa. I'll be darned. That was their home base. Very neat. Yeah, what's the significance of what you have in the case here? Newell stock. Never been uh, up. Which uh, is really hard to find. I guess. Original paint.